Just about any car you buy is a depreciating asset. The second you drive it off the lot, it will lose its value. In today's market, there are some exceptions. With the lack of supply and the massive demand for new cars, vehicles are now holding their value better than they ever have. But if you're looking to buy a new car, here are the best vehicles that will not drop like a rock to the bottom of the ocean with its value. So here are the best vehicles you can buy to protect your pocketbook. <laughs> We're over at IC Cars, top 10 cars that hold their value the best. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. I talk about industry auto news and reviews, typically on the Asian side of things. But today we're going to talk about the entire market. Let's start with the bullet points. Jeep Wrangler remains the best vehicle for holding its value well. Overall, five-year depreciation for new cars drops from 40% in 2021 to 33% in 2022, like I said, because of the lack of new cars, the drop in value isn't as noticeable as it used to be. Just a couple of days ago, I talked about reliability from consumer reports. The Jeep Wrangler is the least reliable car on the market, yet it holds its value. It makes no sense to me, but I guess it's all about that image or if you want to take it off-roading, which most people don't, so it must be people really want to be seen in a Jeep Wrangler so bad that they're happy to buy it used, even though it's going to cause them problems with reliability. And looking at three year depreciation shows a mere 17% decline in value, the smallest drop on record with some used models such as a Porsche 911 actually appreciating in value above its original MSRP. I think that's also true for other vehicles out there like the G-Wagon, for example, and maybe some Teslas as well that cost more on the used market because people don't want to wait around for their new Tesla to be delivered maybe six months from when they place the order. Now, here's a sign of really good things, because if you get a fuel efficient car, including hybrids, a small car, small SUVs or midsize cars, they're holding their value the best and out of all the other categories. So cheap fuel efficient cars are the most sought after in the used market because people don't want to be paying an arm and a leg, not only for a vehicle, but for fuel prices to keep that vehicle running on the road. And large luxury cars lose the most value, including the BMW 7 Series, Maserati Ghibli, as well as the Jaguar XF. So here are the models that have depreciated the least in the last five years. The Jeep Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler well, another Jeep Wrangler, have only dropped a few grand. So if you're buying a new Jeep Wrangler, great purchase because you'll be able to sell it and not really lose any money on it. Uh, Porsche 911, most people can't really afford a Porsche 911. So we're just gonna keep moving. Toyota Tacoma, we're talking about pickup trucks. It's only the pickup truck in this top 10 here that has its value dropping by about five to six grand, about 15% after five years. That is not very much. Honda Civic. So now we're talking about affordable cars on, on the more affordable end, maybe 25, 20 to 25 grand here. Honda Civic having a very strong resale value here. Subaru BRZ. Thing is, there really aren't that many of them on the market to begin with. So that's kind of an outlier, kind of like the, the 911 is. Uh, but it does hold its value. So you'd also could include the uh, Toyota 86 or GR86 in there as well. Toyota Corolla. Again, with that Civic, you saw Versa in there as well, maybe a little bit smaller than the Civic and Corolla, but having that value play from the Nissan brand only dropping $3,000 in value. Uh, that's pretty insane. Chevy Camaro, this is a surprising one as well. Those are the best vehicles you can buy in theory. Remember, the, the archetype for best category is going to be small fuel efficient, low price vehicles have the best uh, resale value overall for the category, but what about vehicles that have depreciated the most in five years? And IC cars already said it's going to be luxury vehicles. The bigger they are, the harder they fall sort of situation here. BMW 7 Series depreciates nearly 57% in five years, a drop of $61,000 from uh, when it's new. Maserati Ghibli, about the same thing, $51,000 drop off the MSRP. XF Jaguar in there as well, 36 grand drop, a 54% decrease in uh, its value. Infiniti QX80, 
44 grand. That is not a good buy. And this is what I've been saying. Uh, well, if we look at the Nissan page, the same vehicle here is the Nissan Armada. And the Nissan Armada, I mean, the Platinum is essentially a bargain of a QX80. And it gets, I mean, it's just an amazing vehicle. But you can also get it in the SV grade, 57K. I mean, you can even get it in rear wheel drive at 50k and it just kind of nullifies the infinity qx80s uh existence in my opinion because uh, it looks just as good uh, you can argue maybe it even looks better than the qx80 in some ways so cadillac escalate esv drops like a rock doesn't surprise me mercedes-benz s-class another luxury sedan and this is has the highest drop in price um not in percentage but the highest drop of price even beating out the $61,000 7 Series. So S-Class in there as well. Lincoln Navigator, $41,000. It drops after five years. Audi A6, Volvo S90. I think I'm getting a Volvo S60 uh, in for review next week. So stay tuned for that. Ford Expedition, not that much different from that Lincoln Navigator, right? Dropping about 50%. The national average is uh, 33% but these vehicles are all 50% drop in value. So these are the worst vehicles you can buy if you value a good deal. Now, vehicles that depreciated in the least in the last three years. So a smaller um, sample size here, and it will tell a better story of the current market with the lack of new cars um, and a lack of used cars also on the market. So Porsche 911 has gone up in price. RAV4 Hybrid, it's minus or plus. This is must be a typo here. RAV4 Hybrid has gone up 2.5% over MSRP. Holy smokes. Jeep Wrangler Unlimited uh, has gone up as well over MSRP. And then they came in here up over MSRP. And then uh, the normal Jeep Wrangler as well. So Toyota Hybrid's looking to hold their value really well here. It's the same thing with Jeeps as we expected from what we saw earlier. What are the top 10 vehicles with the lowest depreciation in a three-year period? G-Wagon. I mentioned that vehicle earlier before we even got here. Honda Civic, Subaru Crosstrek, CHR, another Porsche, another Toyota. So a lot of these Toyotas here, and we finally see a Tesla. I'm not surprised to see this on the list. Top five small SUVs that hold their value the best. Well, Jeep Wrangler. How is that a small SUV? I guess because it's two rows. <laughs> so those are kind of outliers. Subaru Crosstrek. Honda HRV, Toyota RAV4. Top five small SUVs that lose their value the most. Volkswagen Tiguan. Reviewed that vehicle. Gorgeous vehicle, but doesn't surprise me that uh, the build quality and the reliability is probably not there. Therefore, the, de the depreciation is massive on it. GMC Terrain, Equinox, Ford Escape, and Mitsubishi Outlander. Now, the Mitsubishi Outlander just came out with a new model, so that could change its outlook maybe with a three-year depreciation instead. Midsize SUVs, the Forerunner depreciates the least, the Highlander depreciates the next least, Durango, uh, and then the Honda Pilot. We have that new Honda Pilot coming out soon here in the Jeep Grand Cherokee. But what are the top five midsize SUVs that lose their value the most? Oof, Nissan Pathfinder, but that I think is gonna change with the, the new Nissan Pathfinder having a nine-speed automatic compared to the CVT that uh, they had the, these last four or five years. A uh, Hyundai Santa Fe drops like a rock as well. That's crazy. Didn't see that one. Hyundai, uh, Chevy Traverse, Ford Edge, and Nissan Murano. Surprised the Nissan Murano is still being made because the, the Rogue is just a, a cash cow. And it's not that much different in size. Now, hybrids, five-year depreciation. I'm looking to get the new Toyota Prius. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna trade in my 2012. It would be cool to do kind of like an ownership experience or what I like better in my 2012 versus my 2023, but I really don't need two Priuses in the driveway and I don't really drive them that often anyways because I have press cars. But anyways, Toyota Prius holds its value the best compared to any other hybrid on the market. And the Prius Prime is right there behind it. The RAV4 Hybrid, as we saw in recent times, is actually appreciating in value. And then we have the average here about 29%. Kia Nero, a hybrid at 30. They just came out with a new one, by the way. Heard good things about it. Haven't driven it yet. I drove the outgoing plug-in hybrid model. Really enjoyed it. Anyway, so that is doing well here. 
So we had a Highlander hybrid, then Camry hybrid, then Accord hybrid with the new Accord hybrid coming out fairly soon here. And then the Sonata hybrid dropping uh, to number eight here. Now, what about five-year depreciation of electric vehicles? This is still a new category. It's continuing to grow. I think it's at 6% of the new car market at right now, electric vehicles. Consumer Reports says the most reliable vehicle types are hybrids and the most unreliable are electric vehicles and full-size pickup trucks tied at 16. So when we look at these numbers here, they should be uh, pretty big here with depreciation. Model X drops 38% and Model S, but these are $100,000 vehicles and kind of like maybe the S-Class and the BMW 7 Series sedans. I know we're comparing a sedan and a crossover to luxury sedans, but yes, they drop in value too because the bigger they are, the further they have to fall. EV average is about 44% of dropping its value in, in five years, and that's because the battery packs probably um, you know, it's not, people aren't really worried about a hybrid battery pack going bad. And if they do with today's market and today's solu uh, third party solutions, it's really affordable to put, um, a battery. If like my 2012 Prius battery goes out right now, being 10 years old, it's only like a thousand dollars to swap it out. So, uh, and I don't have to do any work myself. Not, not that hard. Anyways, it's not a thousand dollars to replace uh, a bad battery pack on, on an electric vehicle, uh, or it's maybe five digits depending on the model. And here we go, Nissan Leaf rounding out the top four Bolt EV. There just aren't that many sample sizes here because EVs haven't been on the market that long. So the top five small cars with the lowest depreciation. We already talked about the Honda Civic and the Corolla being in the top ten, and as well as the Nissan Versa was in the top ten as well. Chevy Spark in there, Kia Rio, not that far behind the Nissan Versa. So so the smallest cars that lose the most value, the Mirage, the Minis, the Golf GTIs, probably because people modify them uh, and they're not the most reliable, either Nissan Sentra and the Volkswagen Jetta. So two Volkswagens here that have the highest appreciation. And also, well, that's on the small cars, but remember the Volkswagen Tiguan depreciates the most for small SUVs as well. Sports cars seemingly are holding their value pretty strong here. We know the BRZ and the Toyota 86 are dropping around 18% after five years. It's not a lot. Um, the Mazda MX-5 RF, I have one in the driveway for review right now. Oh, that car just makes me so happy. Anyways, let's wait for my review. It's gonna be the same as all my other reviews on the MX-5. It's just a pleasure machine. Uh, Ford Mustang up there as well with small depreciation and the Dodge Challenger. So. Yeah, coupes are looking good here and the um, all the pony cars in there with the Camaro, Mustang, and Challenger. Mid-sized trucks, here are the best ones to buy. Toyota Tacoma, we already mentioned that one. And then the, there's a big drop from there to the Chevy Colorado and the Frontier, which are both around 25%. But with the new Frontier, that could change as the new one could be more reliable than the outgoing model. Honda Ridgeline being the biggest depreciator in the mid-size pickup truck market. What about the full-size pickup trucks? Well, Toyota Tundra will de depreciate the least, um, which isn't really a big surprise. They are also the small sample size. All the other um, big, th well, the, should I say the big three produce their trucks at such a large volume that I think there's going to be a bigger depreciation, more things to go wrong with them with all their different options and whatnot. There's a big drop from the Tundra to the F-150, then the Sierra. Yeah, they're all kind of in the same ballpark, range from about 30% to about 38%, where the Tundra is the best truck you can buy if you want to have your vehicle hold its value. But this is a really fun video for me, seeing the current situation of the market, seeing all these vehicles, which ones are the best at holding their value? Which ones are the worst at holding their value? The Jeep Wrangler still just blows my mind as that vehicle is seemingly one of the least reliable vehicles on the market, at least according to Consumer Reports. What's also crazy with today's market is the appreciation of certain models uh, due to the lack of new vehicles flooding the market. So I'm going to end there. I'll see you guys talk in the comments below. Hopefully this was a fun video for me, for you, because it was for me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit that like button, subscribe for more news updates. I guess what's coming next on the channel is going to be my Mazda MX-5 review. And then I'm going to Volvo S60, I believe, after that. And then I'm going to San Diego to drive the new Prius in about a week or two from now. So stay tuned for all that good stuff. Can't wait to see you in the next video, like I said before. Got to cut myself off. Have a great day. The kids are screaming. Take care of yourselves and peace out.